Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may not really know why you're thinking it, but you want to start somewhere because you're still here. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm.
world, uh -huh. spiritual wickedness in high places, yeah. influencing, now listen to this very carefully, influencing the people who have the power to make decisions that affect people's lives. Yeah. Wow. So we're not talking about no root of poop stuff here. No, no. We're talking about some spiritual wickedness oh, yeah. in high places. High that, and, and, and what these spirits do is they influence people. They govern people's lives. Come on, somebody. So they're not thinking about what we got going on inside the four walls of a church building. No, see, these people are in government. These people are in the White House. These people are in the school system. Do you hear what I'm saying? They are in an area that actually has power and influence the lives of people. The lives of our children. Amen. My God. So in Ephesians 6, and y'all done heard this over and over again. When Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10, tell us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So you can't miss that part. Because if you ain't strong in the Lord and the power of his might, you might as well just set no home right there. Ain't no use you trying to go no further when you're talking about being in this kingdom. Come on, somebody. So he says that we have to first be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He said, put on the whole armor of God. Not a piece of it. Not half of it. The whole armor of God. Come on, somebody. That we may be able to stand against what? The lies of the devil. Now let's talk about their right quick. Because, you know, I, I don't think we quite understand. We want to fight like this. Yeah. He ain't told us to fight like that. He said stand against the wiles of the schemes of the tricks of the enemy, the cunning of the enemy. So what does he mean by stand against? He don't mean just stand still, don't do nothing, and close your mouth and be quiet. No, standing against something means to oppose. To disprove, to contradict, to cancel, to dispute, to overthrow. What am I saying? What I'm saying is, when these wicked, come on somebody, rulers of darkness, sit here in these high places, in these governments, and they try to change the laws, come on somebody, against the law of God. Is in, a, is in a mess, in an uproar. Because the saints have lost sight of what we're supposed to be doing while we're living in this earth realm. The saints think that we're supposed to just come in this building once a week for about an hour or two and think we're doing God a favor. Can I just tell you something? You are no threat to the kingdom of darkness if you think that he says because we
The Bible says if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now this is what your Bible says. If anyone loves the world, that means if you love all these organizations, if you love all these different things that are wicked, that oppose the laws of God, he says that the love of the Father is not in you. Now, I know that you all remember when we were once dead in our trespasses. Because we have been saved all our life. Amen. Yeah. I know you remember when you once was of the Lord. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We got a soul, yes. and then we 
all got a spirit. Now you remember back in Genesis, Adam and Eve. You remember when God formed mankind, made mankind. And, and, and he made us in the likeness, in the image of him. Amen. So when God first breathed a man in the nostrils, man came to what? Life. Right? Okay. So now, that spirit was the right spirit at that time. See, we got to go back to get this thing. But see, what's happening is we're going back to that place. We're going back to the place that where God originally made us. Come on, somebody. So, they had a right spirit out of the Eden at that time. God gave them one command. We done heard it over and over again. What was the command? Don't do what? They have a one plan. Now we got, I don't know how many we got, but at that time they have a one command not to eat. Come on now. He said, in, in the day that you do, you shall what? Surely die. Come on now. Now he was talking about a spiritual death. And a physical death. But he was more so talking about a spiritual death right then and there. So this is what I'm out my notes now. This is what Satan did. When I, I told my husband this right here, I told I, I, I put it back and I analyzed Genesis. I said, now, why would Satan go to Eve and not go to Adam? Adam was given the command. But Satan went to Eve, went to the woman. I told my husband, I said, you know what? I think Satan was sitting back, watching Adam, scoping out when God presented Eve to Adam. Remember when God presented Eve to Adam? The first thing Adam said was what? Bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. I mean, Adam had got excited about that woman, didn't he? And I believe Satan sat back and said, yeah. That's going to be his weakness right there. That's the one I'm going to go to right there. Because he's a little bit too excited about that woman. Come on, somebody. So I believe Satan was just scoping the scene. Like he do with us, he scopes the scene. He see what we like. Come on, somebody. And he analyzed. Come on, somebody. So we went to Eve. But listen, because I'm going to tell you how he works. He went to Eve. Oh, what you got? And he said, Come on. Did God really say not to eat yeah. off the tree? See, he didn't tell Eve to eat off the tree. He asked her a question. He was getting into her head, trying to see how far he could get. Instead of Eve shutting that down right then and there, she decided to keep dialoguing with Satan. She knew the command. But all Satan wanted to see was, can I get your attention long enough to get in your head? Come on, somebody. So he asked her a question to see where her mind was. So he told Satan what she said. And Satan said, you will not surely die. Come on here. He said, God just don't want you to, he just don't want you to be like him. He just don't want you to be wise like him. Now, they was already created. They had everything they could possibly need. Come on, somebody. The only thing they didn't know was death. They didn't know evil. They didn't realize that God was keeping them from the very thing that was destroyed them. Satan put a thought in Eve's head. That's the only power he got over people. Mm. See, some of us are so scared of the devil and so scared of the dark that we think Satan got all this power. We think that he can take your steering wheel and snatch you and make you drive up the side of the road and all that type of stuff. No, 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 no. What he do is he say, listen, go take that drink. It's on 
right, you ain't gonna get all the way drunk. And then when you get drunk and get on the road, you climb off the side of the road.
Because we were cut off from that place of paradise. We, 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 in other words, we were separated from the place of peace. From the place of rest. From, 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 from everything just lovely and all things good. We were separated from all of that because of sin. Our relationship and union with God our Father in heaven was separated. And I don't think people realize that because when we're born in this world, we're born in sin, shaped in iniquity, we're separated from God the Father automatically. Everybody. Come on, somebody. Everybody. So in other words, we're born into a death penalty. Everybody's guilty. And the wages of sin is what? Death. So when we're born into this world out of our mother's womb, we're all born in a death penalty. Everybody's guilty before God. It don't matter if you're rich. It don't matter if you're poor. No matter if you're black. No matter if you're white. Everybody's guilty before God. My, 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 my. Totally separated from his presence. Hallelujah. The problem that's going on with the world is everybody's trying to find their way back to the Father through sacrifices, offerings, shedding of blood. Come on. Trying to keep the law. But none of it was good enough or none of it was righteous enough for God. My, 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 my. So we continue to fall short of his glory. Destined to the eternal death and to the lake of fire. So this is what happened. The devil kept having a field day. <laughs> Accusing the brethren of sin before God. Because he knew that the wages of sin is death. And because of his power of influence, he thought God had failed at his own creation. But what he didn't know was that God already had a plan of redemption in place. And in the fullness of time, and I say in the fullness of time, that means the right time. Come on, somebody. The right time. My God. He told his word. This is God speaking to his word. God was standing up and he was speaking to his word. Yes. My, my, my. Lord, we thank you for your word. My God. God, his word was having a conversation. He said, my children down there been lost and suffering too long without a shepherd. He said, I'm tired of that old devil throwing their sins in my face. Since there is not one righteous enough to pay the debt of the wages of sin, God told his word, he said, go down there to where they are and handle this sin issue once and for all and restore my kingdom authority back on earth. My, 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 my. You see, what we got to understand is the only way sin can be forgiven is by the shedding of clean, sinless blood. So God says, since I can't sacrifice my divine nature, mm. why? Because he said, I gave humans dominion over the earth realm. God is not going to go against his own word. He gave the authority and the power of the earth to humans. He didn't have intentions on leaving heaven and coming to dwell in the earth. He created us to dwell and rule and have dominion in the earth. Come on, everybody. He's not going to go against his word. He said, I said, I can't sacrifice my divine, holy, spiritual nature. He said, I'm going to become one. Like them. Yes. My, 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 my. Wow. That's why in Hebrews 10, 5, he said, but a body yes. you have prepared. 
prepared for me. My God. God prepared a body. A human body. My Lord. So he could come into the earth realm legally. Come on somebody. My God. My God. Because the sacrifice has to be blood for blood.
He came to restore the righteousness and holiness of mankind back to the earth. He came to retrain mankind to think like God. Hebrews 10 verse 6 says, In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. <laughs> verse 7 says, Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. See, all the way prior to Jesus coming, mankind had manipulated the word of God. They couldn't get it right. They twisted the scriptures. They couldn't get it right. They totally missed the will of God. And they put burdens on God's people. They put chains and shackles on God's people. They created man-made traditions and put them on God's people. But they missed the will of God. God's word said, I got to go down there. And I got to be my word, to demonstrate my word where they are. So when the word wrapped himself in human flesh, he came in the world, but the world did not know him. We 
are incapable of living according to the will of God without his Holy Spirit. And the only way to get the Holy Spirit is to repent. Now, this is what the Holy Spirit done told me about this. Because he done unleashed a glory cloud across this nation. Church is not going to look like what it's been looking like. I can tell you that right now. There's a glory cloud of knowledge that have been activated into the hearts of God's people. And under this glory cloud is the preaching of the kingdom of God. He said, tell my people that it's time to repent. The kingdom of heaven is here. What does it mean to repent? I'm not talking about Lord, I'm drinking and I don't want to drink no more. No. Lord, I'm sleeping with somebody I ain't married to. I don't want to sleep with them no more. I'm right. sorry. Right. That ain't what repentance. Repent means to change your whole right. way of thinking. Yeah. Light is 
truth. Light, the light means knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge is the truth, God's truth. Yeah. His only truth. Yeah, so when you talk about light and dark, when Jesus said you are the light of the world, he said you are the knowledge of the world, the knowledge that the world needs. You are walk, you are God's truth. Everywhere you go, you're supposed to be the light. You're supposed to be representing the image of God everywhere you go. So, because the world operates in ignorance and blindness, because they don't know God, they don't know his nature. When you show up on the scene, you show up in the kingdom of God shows up. When you on your job and your co-workers talking about your boss like a dog, yes, you the one in there saying, hold on, y'all don't say Come that. Hey! 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 You may go take a corner and just pray. Yes, Somebody will see you, why is she over here? She's over here acting like that. They ain't doing what we doing. Right. Hallelujah. This is the right. kingdom. That's the kingdom. When you in a grocery store Glory, and ain't but two cashiers in Walmart yes. <laughs> and it's Christmas season oh, you right. them there. <laughs> and the line is what? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Cussing, acting a fool, complaining. But you found a way to evangelize and <laughs> Thank you. 
He made his soul an offering for sin. And so he will see his descendants. He will live a long life. And through him, my purpose will succeed. After a life of suffering, he will again have joy. He will know that he did not suffer in vain. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. My devoted servant with whom I am will bear the punishment of many and for his sake I will forgive them. My God.
If you know 